Good morning. Well, it's 9.07 and we missed the 9 o'clock start time, but not by as much as Berkeley tradition. Good morning. It's uh, really a great pleasure and an honor to welcome you on behalf of the Energy and Resources Group, which I chair, and, and really the entire campus community, but now I'm presuming for the chancellor, uh, to our uh, celebration of the 80th birthday of Art Rosenfeld and his accomplishments and influence. Uh, my name is Bill Nazaroff. I am chair of the Energy and Resources Group and a professor of environmental engineering here, and I'm a card-carrying member of the Art Rosenfeld Fan Club. <laughs> the uh, symposium today is entitled The Energy Symposium, The Rosenfeld Effect. You'll see, uh, I think, if you don't already amply know why the subtitle is The Rosenfeld Effect during the course of the presentations, we have an extraordinarily distinguished panel of speakers. Uh, just a few words about Art before I introduce the Chancellor. Uh, Art is in the middle of his third career. Um, he was a physicist of world-class uh, accomplishment, a student of Fermi, uh, in fact the last PhD student of Fermi at the University of Chicago, and we hear that Art was his second most promising PhD student, but we don't know who the first was. <laughs> He, he came to uh, Berkeley shortly thereafter and worked closely with Louis Alvarez and contributed substantially to, the, uh, to Louis's receipt of the Nobel Prize for Physics. In uh, the early 1970s, Art had an epiphany, which many of the rest of us have shared, which coincided with the OPEC oil embargo of, of those days. And um, what he recognized was the importance of energy efficiency as a means to uh, make progress in responding to our energy challenges. And uh, he uh, contributed to the, he began his second career really then as uh, director of the Energy Efficient Buildings Program at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory and co-founder of that. And there's a long list of his achievements during this period from 1974 to 1994 that we will be amply uh, exploring during today's uh, presentations. And then um, in 1994, he moved to the beginning of his third career, which is uh, in government service and uh, scientific policy. And he worked in the Department of Energy as a senior advisor uh, in, uh, during the period 1994 to 99. And then in the year 2000, he was appointed as a commissioner of the California Energy Commission. And he was recently reappointed uh, by Governor Schwarzenegger to a second term in that role. So I'm figuring, looking at his history, that by 2014 we should see Art beginning his fourth career, but we have to wait and see exactly what that will be. The um, celebration today is not so much about his career in physics, but about his contributions in the second and third parts, or second and third careers that he's had. To uh, begin, and to really welcome you all to the campus, I'd like to introduce uh, our chancellor, Robert Bergino is an internationally renowned physicist who has specialized in the experimental study of unusual states of matter. He earned his PhD in physics at Yale in 1966. You may hear uh, an echo, PhD in physics, and gone on to do something else brilliant in addition. And after a seven-year stint at Bell Labs, he joined the MIT faculty. He became their dean of science in 1991. In 2000, he returned to his Canadian roots to become the president of the University of Toronto. In September 2004, he was appointed as the ninth chancellor of the UC Berkeley campus. He brings to the campus a passion for diversity and a commitment to seeing that the public part of our mission as a public university is upheld while we remain a first-class research and teaching institution. Uh, I should note that he is listed as, for his contributions in physics as one of the most highly cited physicists um, which is like the top 50 or 100 in, in the world. Uh, although I also note that the uh, Institute of Scientific Information still lists his affiliation at the University of Toronto. Uh, it was something we'll need to fix. Uh, so Chancellor Bergino, please. It's uh, great to be here. I always like these kind of celebrations, but indeed, uh, as you can well imagine, I particularly like celebrations that, uh, that uh, uh, trumpet and applaud the uh, accomplishments of people from my own field. Um, and uh, it's not in my notes, but I immediately was running down in my mind other Fermi students that I know trying to figure out uh, if art is the 
second best, who the best is. Uh, and it uh, could be one of my good friends, uh, Jerry Friedman, who won the Nobel Prize for discovering the quark, uh, which is a not that standard. But uh, uh, whether Jerry really meets art's standard or not, I'm not quite sure. But since Jerry's not here, I can say that safely. Uh, this uh, Rosenfeld effect gathering uh, confirms my best instincts about the value of insight, analysis, and persistence in addressing incredibly diverse and pressing scientific, technical, and, and uh, social policy issues. Uh, in Art Rosenfeld, who I guess we can refer affectionately to as the birthday boy, uh, <laughs> honoree today, uh, we have an exemplary example, as you just heard from Bill, uh, of a career spent in search of interesting problems uh, with interesting in quotation marks defined by their importance, uh, not simply their appeal to one of our many senses, be that intellectual, practical, or social. And as you also heard, he's moved effortlessly between problems and projects that span disciplines, uh, approaches, and styles. Uh, of course, uh, as I noted already, today's uh, uh, event also, and just looking at many of the people in the audience that I know, also confirms uh, the fact that uh, physicists actually can play a useful role in society in spite of <laughs> many people's uh, doubts. Uh, Art was trained and remains a physicist at heart. As you heard, he was uh, Enrico Fermi's last student, and he began his career as a quote-unquote conventional physicist. Uh, uh, if we can use that uh, as the protege of the person who uh, uh, was the creator of the sustained nuclear chain reaction uh, uh, in the football stadium at the University of Chicago, I realized I probably should have hired Art as a consultant uh, to tell us what to do with our football stadium since, <laughs> since uh, <laughs> shakes his head and says no, since Fermi uh, I'm a squash player, and it was uh, the only bad thing about that was he used up a squash court, as I understand it. But, <laughs> so, uh, uh, anyway, by training and inclination, Art clearly began with a keen sense of the role of physics, but more importantly, of uh, you know really difficult analytic, uh, serious analytic work, and its larger role in society. Uh, as a professor of physics at Berkeley, Art continued his work in nuclear physics, but simultaneously expanded the sort of socially driven scientific agenda that has become the hallmark of his career. Uh, he established the computing division at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, which is now, you know, especially in this, in this decade, has become extraordinarily uh, important. Uh, he played a central role in the founding of the Energy and Resources Group here on campus, and uh, he established LBL as the world leader in energy efficiency analysis and action, and I'm sure seeing Steve Chu sitting here that we'll hear more about that uh, later. Uh, he also taught for many years a physics course uh, on energy efficiency that was a central feature of the uh, Energy and Resources Group curriculum. Uh, these activities all share a number of traits, but one of the most salient is that they are each vehicles to address social needs. Uh, computing and forecasting is central to our analysis of energy futures, impacts, and options. Uh, ERG is the premier interdisciplinary training and research facility on what we now term the science and policy of sustainability and energy efficiency, uh, as I'll describe, and is arguably the single greatest change in our industrial economy in the last four decades. So, let me talk about energy efficiency. Uh, at LBL, ERG, the U.S. Department of Energy, and now at the California Energy Commission, ART has championed energy efficiency. Uh, he's used, combined, and intertwined tools of resource analysis, economics, uh, public policy, and an interesting, and I coined the adjective, Rosenfeldian form of evangelism. <laughs> I must say, actually, I, yesterday afternoon, as an aside, uh, spent an hour with our uh, I have an, uh, advisory committee, a student, largely student-driven advisory committee on sustainability. And uh, I can tell you that our students have certainly uh, 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 
acquired your kind of evangelism uh, about, about sustainability and about energy efficiencies, et cetera, right? Uh, also, probably your entrepreneurship, because they were hitting me up for large amounts of money to keep this. <laughs> uh, uh, Art's work on the value of energy efficiency captured in true physics form in his forecasts of California's possible energy futures and set the stra stage for or contributed to, uh, first of all, uh, enlightenment around the com comparability of efficiency measures in classic brick and mortar power plants, uh, the megawatt analysis that uh, Amory Lovins has developed is such a tremendous effect, uh, a practical vision of appropriate technology, in quotation marks, for steps as seemingly simple as painting roofs white can obviate the need for baseload fossil fuel power plants, uh, a recognition of the incredible value of computation and information through the use of smart meters in transforming the management, economics, and indeed the future of demand-side energy. Along the way, uh, Art has trained several generations of scientists and analysts in both basic and applied studies of the physical world and our energy future, uh, some of whom have gone on to win the highest awards for analysis and public service. Uh, and I think all of you probably know by now uh, one of these award winners uh, is Art himself, and, and uh, you probably know that uh, Mr. Bush yesterday uh, named Arthur H. Rosenfeld as the winner of the Enrico Fermi Award. is actually, in case you didn't know, the government's oldest award for scientific achievement. Uh, and uh, it's actually good that Art w you know, waited a little while before he was willing to receive this award because I remember <laughs> that the last time I actually nominated someone when I was at MIT for the award, it was $150,000 and I noted that it's now up to $375,000. So, so in this case, holding off a little was a really smart thing to do. Uh, uh, President Bush uh, says, Dr. Rosenfeld's vision helped launch the energy efficiency industry. He is an inspiration for the young people of this nation who want to pursue a career in science. Uh, and some of you may have seen actually that this even spilled over to Thomas Friedman who last week had a editorial or a piece in the op-ed piece in the New York Times calling on the current generation of students not just to be not to see energy efficiency and the environment as a hobby, but to become true crusaders. So this should be the crusade of the 21st century, and it's obviously following uh, in, your, in your lead. Uh, so I, as I understand it, you will receive the Fermi Award at a ceremony in Washington, D.C. at a date which I guess is to be announced. So let me just wrap up by saying it's both a, pl a, uh, uh, a special pleasure to introduce Art to you today. Uh, and also to be able to claim him as a resource and pillar of the Berkeley community, and I think actually our fifth Enrico Fermi Award winner, is that correct, of, of, the, uh, of uh, Berkeley. So we're you know, just extraordinarily proud, and of course it's a who's who, not just of Berkeley, but of the uh, scientific community who have previously won the Enrico Fermi Award, and you obviously, uh, if anything, helped raise the stature. So again, congratulations, and thank you.